Welcome back to another episode of A Tanker's View. Hot off our community poll, you chose the Chimera next. Because of course 40k won. 40k always wins, am I right? So let's get some housekeeping out of the way, shall we? I would like to thank every, each and one of you again from the bottom of my heart for all of you who subscribed in the last little while. This channel is growing every day because of lovely people like you. And I'd absolutely love it if you're not yet subscribed, if you'd click it for me. Maybe give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. It really does help me reach more of you out there. And now, remember this is all in fun. My own personal opinion based on my time as a tank crewman. And it's really not meant to be taken all too seriously. So with my obligatory self-service out of the way. So, first things first. The Chimera is not a tank. But Tony, I hear you say, it sure looks like a tank. Well, I can most assuredly tell you it is certainly not. This is going to require just a minor lesson in armor deployment, so bear with me while I lay out my reasons. Here's why. Let's look at something we in the industry call Armored Fighting Vehicle Recognition, or AFV for short. This is what initially attracted me to 40k, as a lot of their vehicles are clearly based on real world vehicles scaled up and upgunned to an absolute ludicrous degree. Now, I'm going to put three images up on the screen for everyone now to see. The reason I chose these three is because they're the most easily recognizable and widely produced tracked armored vehicles in the Western world. Granted, they all share very similar features. Tracks, boxy hull, and a turret, mostly. Now, but they are very much not the same. To paraphrase Ryan Macbeth again, if it can't take a round of the face from a pier and keep coming, it's not a tank. I'll also post a link to his video if you're interested in the subject of AFV down below. Now, only one of these vehicles can really do this. The other two most certainly cannot. One of these vehicles is meant to break the line, the next one is meant to get infantry to the front and provide support by fire, and the last one is meant to get infantry close to the front or evacuate infantry from the front. The Chimera is certainly not designed as a tank as it carries infantry. This would place it firmly in the realm of infantry fighting vehicle, maybe to a lesser extent as an APC if the armaments have mostly been removed. Remarkably enough, the Imperium treats them as such, actually making it really hard to tear this one a new one, which is kind of low-key frustrating because that's what I kind of built this channel on. Now, IFVs, or infantry fighting vehicles, have a whole different set of principles in mind when it comes to the design and utilization. They aren't meant to take on tanks or heavy armor alone. They're meant to move in conjunction with heavy armor, supporting each other while they deploy infantry to hold the ground the armor has just taken. Because armor doesn't hold ground, it was never meant to. Now if you ask yourself why, it's because defenses are largely static. Armor is meant to fire and maneuver. That is incredibly difficult to do when you must maneuver around your own defensive fortifications without destroying them to fire on the enemy. And no, you simply cannot dig your tank into a bunker because now you have a very expensive, very large piece of equipment that cannot move if it becomes a target. Which it most certainly will, as sieges often seek to eliminate fixed defenses first usually. Now, let's take a good hard look at the Chimera and explain why this simply just isn't an APC, but actually a well-rounded and competent infantry fighting vehicle. So, with credit where credit is due, well done to whoever designed this. Give yourself a solid pat on the back from me. Good job. Good job. Good job. At 38 tons, 6.9 meters long, 5.7 meters wide, and 3.72 meters high, with about a half a meter or 0.45 uh, meters of ground clearance, it is very decently proportioned as an IFV. It can carry 12 fully outfitted guardsmen, or 4 Ogren, which is actually more than most IFVs now, but still less than optimal given its overall size. The guardsmen are giving firing ports to 3 port and 3 starboard. This is very reminiscent of Soviet era IFVs like the BMP-1, and to, even to a degree certain American IFVs before the idea was discarded entirely. Now. The reason it was discarded because it's realized it was as big as danger to the enemy as it was to your own soldiers, and the Imperium probably should move to discard this practice too, but it's unlikely. Now I'm probably wrong on this, but from my perspective, it looks like the Chimera was kind of based on the Bradley IFV and maybe a little bit to the extent of the M113, as it shows with the adaptability and modularity of the system. With base models be either being mounted with heavy bolters or flamers, it can easily be swapped out in any combination of light or medium fire support, which is demonstrated by the number of variants, which I'll display here.
They range from amphibious infantry gun carriers to anti-armor all the way back to ambulances, all based off of one surprisingly well-designed chassis. It has got all the hallmarks of your standard IFE, well-sloped glacius plate, forward mounting turret, and a rear drop hatch for infantry, and the, and the anachronistic top hatches, sorry, while providing some utility are a bit of a glaring weak point for, indi er, for indirect fire, sorry. Its firepower can be heavily augmented depending on the situation or environment the vehicle is in. The base model includes either heavy bolters or flamers. It can also be outfitted with missile packs, shortened battle cannons, or a four-pack of light auto cannons, allowing this to spit out a continuous stream of the Emperor's justice while covering his guardsmen. Powering the Chimera is a V16 multi-burn engine. It is blisteringly fast for 40k, topping it at around 55 to 70 kilometers per hour which again shows how, even in the lore, they're treating it for what it was designed for, which is actually really nice to see. And its chassis is really where it shines. The chassis is pretty much the jack of all trades, from firing massive ballistic missiles to a self-propelled artillery platform, because the limit of the platform seems to be limited to the imagination of the Mechanicus, and, well, they've got a pretty vivid imagination at times. Who knew the Imperium would be using something similar to the M113 that far into the future, right? But... That's just my opinion. Well, I know you all kind of wanted me to go on some unhinged rant. The thing is, it's extraordinarily tough when I'm staring at something that by all rights would actually work. And yeah, this is a very competent design. It's well executed and surprisingly grounded in reality. Something I'm not familiar with G-dubs doing very often. So again, well done. Anyway, guys, if you like this content, again, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave me a comment, and I will see you guys in the next one. Look out for the next community poll coming up next week.